Exchanging data over a secure channel between two computers. How can this be done? Well, for those of us that run Linux, we have several options, but the most popular option is called SSH, the secure shell. Let's discuss this. So what is the secure shell, SSH? Let's take a look at the Arch Wiki. What better documentation is there than the Arch Wiki? So, Secure Shell, SSH. It is a network protocol that allows data to be exchanged over a secure channel between two computers. Encryption provides confidentiality and integrity of data. SSH uses public key cryptography to authenticate the remote computer and allow the remote computer to authenticate the user, if necessary. So, you can read uh, more from the Arch Wiki here. I will, of course, link to this page this SSH page in the Arch Wiki. For those of you that want to read it, it is a very long page. Uh, it goes into great detail about SSH. There is a lot to SSH. I am going to do really a surface overview of SSH today. I'm not a sysadmin. I don't work with a lot of Linux servers. Usually what I do, you know, I focus on Linux on the desktop because that's all I am. I'm a Linux desktop user. I'm going to show you how me, an average Linux desktop user, uses something like SSH, and I do occasionally use SSH for, you know, things on the desktop. And uh, let me show you. So I, I pulled up my terminal here. This is URXVT. Uh, let me enlarge it. I do want you guys to pay attention to something. This is the terminal here on my main production machine that runs Manjaro. You see NeoFetch. I've got Manjaro, all my system information. That's cool, right? Pay attention to this, because this may change later. You'll see a different NeoFetch, and it won't be the Manjaro logo, because I'm going to S actually SSH into one of my other computers. That laptop behind me, that's a prime candidate. Let's SSH into that. But first, let me make the font bigger. If you don't have SSH on your Linux distro by default, some distros will ship with SSH on it. Some don't by default, but you can install it. I, of course, I'm running an Arch-based distro. Arch, you do sudo pacman-s for install, and then open SSH is the name of the package. That installs the SSH client and the SSH server on your system. That's all you need, that one package. Those of you running an Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based distribution, sudo apt, well, sudo apt install open ssh dash client for the client for open ssh if you want to also install the server package open ssh dash server so those two packages for both the client and the server again in arch just sudo pacman dash capital s open ssh so i've already got it here on my manjaro system so i want to ssh into that laptop behind me you guys see that that laptop is running arco linux I need the IP address for that machine. I know it. If I didn't know the IP address for that machine, uh, you can get IP address in a number of ways on a lot of systems. This command that I show you right here, for example, if I wanted the IP address for my main production machine here that's running Manjaro, IP space ADDR for address space show will get me the information I'm looking for. Uh, this right here would be the IP address of this machine. I could do that on that laptop, get the IP address for that. I already know what the IP address for that machine is. Anyway, so I'm going to SSH into it. To do this, you type SSH space, then the username that you're logging into that machine as. Now, my username on my main production machine is DT, right? My, ma uh, my username on that laptop is also DT. So I actually don't have to specify a username if they're the same username on both machines, but for purposes of this video, I will specify a username just in case they were different. You would type your username, in my case DT, at the IP address of that laptop. And I know that the IP address of that laptop is 10.0.0.24. And that's all I need. I hit enter. Uh, this may take a few seconds, maybe several seconds actually. But it will eventually come up with a password prompt because I'm logging in as the user over there, the DT user on that laptop. What is the password for the DT user on that laptop? Not the DT user on this machine, the DT user on that laptop. So I will give it a password. And look, a terminal, you see the NeoFetch information here? 
that is actually the terminal on that machine there. I am now actually on that machine. This is Arco Linux, and this is no longer Manjaro, right? You see the CPU, GPU, everything is different, all the system information. So now I can do anything I want to on that machine. I'm logged into that machine. If I do a ls command, I'm in the home directory. That is the home directory of that machine, not this machine. We are on that remote computer now, right? It's not that remote because it's just a couple of feet away from me, but it could be anywhere, right? We could have SSH'd into a machine half a world away. If I wanted to update that machine, now this is where it gets interesting for those of us Linux desktop users, if you have multiple machines, sometimes you have them in different rooms, you don't want to walk, you know, upstairs to update the machine you've got upstairs or in the basement, or sometimes you maybe have, I don't know, multiple houses, you know, places you live, uh, maybe you're trying to be a support channel for family members or friends, you want to update their machines for them. Well, if you have um, remote access to their machine, you can just SSH into it, and now... While I'm here, I can run sudo pacman dash capital S, lowercase y, lowercase u. I don't think there's anything to update on that laptop. I just updated it not too long ago. Starting full system upgrade. Yeah, it's got about three packages. I'm going to go ahead and run that upgrade. And I am upgrading that laptop. How cool is that? That laptop could have been anywhere. It didn't have to be in this room, this house, the city I'm in. It could have been, again, half a world away. Really, really cool aspect of SSH is just getting into a system to do system maintenance, right? Now, we, we mentioned exchanging data. That's really what I like to use SSH for, you know, as far as my machines, is transferring files from one machine to another. Now, if you have, like I have this laptop and my desktop right here, transferring files is pretty easy because I could just get a flash drive. They're both right here. Put something on a flash stick. You know, then just take it, plug it into the laptop, copy it over. But again, if your machines are not in the same physical location, you know, what's a good way for file transfer? I mean, you got cloud options. You've got a bunch of options. But SSH has a really neat feature called uh, Secure Copy. The Secure Shell has a feature called Secure Copy, which is SCP. Let me pull up the SCP page from the ArchWiki. The Secure Copy is a protocol to transfer files via the Secure Shell. The SSH File Transfer Protocol, which is F SFTP, is a related protocol. We're going to talk about SFTP in just a second, but SCP, how do you use it? Well, why don't we copy something from this machine to that machine, or vice versa? So let me clear the screen. Uh can't type today. All right, I'm still logged into that laptop. Now, to transfer something from this machine to that machine or vice versa, we would use the command scp space. And for this demonstration, let's copy something from my main production machine to that laptop. How do we do this? So we're logged into that laptop, right? We SSH'd into that laptop. This terminal I'm looking at on this machine is actually that machine. So SCP space, and then if I'm going to copy a file from this machine to that machine, let's specify the file on this machine first. DT at the DT user at 10.0.0.181. That's the IP for this machine. This is the DT user on my main production machine at this IP. Colon, and then the name of a file. Uh, for demonstration purposes, because I know exactly the name of this file and where it's at here in my home directory, I know I have an X resources file, dot X resources. Let's just copy that to that machine. I don't want to put that in the home directory on that machine because it's going to overwrite the X resources on that machine. I don't want to do that. So I want to save it to a different directory on that machine. Home slash DT slash, we'll put it in the downloads directory over there. Uh, give it a a ending slash as well. All right, now it wants the DT at this IP address, my main production machine's password. All right, and it copied this X resources on my main production machine to the downloads folder on that laptop. So let me CD into the downloads folder over there. Again, that's on the laptop. List, well, since it's a dot file, I need to do the A flag. And there it is. 
.x resources. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I don't want to keep it. So, all right. So that's how you transfer files from one machine to the next. I did that from my main machine to the laptop, you know, so the host machine to the remote machine. How would we go the other way? Well, the other way would be, let me get that command back up that I, all right. So I could do the X resources from that machine to this machine. How would I do that? Well, scp dot x resources because on that machine I'm logged into that machine I don't have to specify user IP I'm already on that machine I don't have to specify the full path because I'm already in the uh, no I'm in the downloads directory so let's cd first and then scp dot x resources and then put it on this machine now I need to specify dt at 10.0.0.181 then colon, and then the location on this machine that I want to put the X resources. Again, I don't want to overwrite my X resources, so I'll put it in the slash home slash DT slash downloads folder again. But this time, you know, on this machine, we're going the opposite direction. It's asking for the password for this machine. I know this can be kind of confusing, especially since my usernames are the same on each machine, but it just sent the X resources file from that machine to the downloads folder on this machine. So if I actually exit, type exit to get out of SSH. Now I'm back on my main machine. If I type NeoFetch. You'll see I'm back on Manjaro now, right? CD into my downloads folder. List. And I have an X resources file there. That's the X resources file from that laptop. Pretty cool, huh? So SSH is a, it's a pretty simple way to do some file transfers between... Uh, two computers, one local and one remote. Uh, we mentioned SCP and SFTP. So SCP was the secure copy command. I just showed you what is SFTP. That is the Secure Shells file transfer protocol. Let me show you how you can use this with a neat little GUI file transfer protocol tool called FileZilla. So I've got FileZilla already installed on my machine. If you don't have FileZilla on your Linux distribution, you can install it. It's in everybody's repos. Uh, in Ubuntu, and Ubuntu-based distros, sudo apt install FileZilla. Uh, on Arch and Arch-based distros, you can sudo pacman s FileZilla. Anyway, FileZilla is going to try to connect to a remote host, or remote machine, that is. Um, it's going to use the SFTP, the Secure File Transfer Protocol. So what you need to do is, in the host field here, what is the IP address for that remote machine we want to log into? On that laptop, again, 10.0.0.24 is the IP. You can specify that you want to connect with the SFTP protocol. You could SF, SFTP, well, if I can type it, SFTP colon slash slash and then 10.0.0.24 but if you don't add that FileZilla assumes you're probably wanting to connect with SFTP anyway so the host IP of the machine we're logging into that laptop username for the uh, user we're logging into that laptop as DT in my case the password for that DT user on that laptop all right and then the port number uh, the port I believe is 22 all right, and then hit Quick Connect here in FileZilla, and all right, we are logged in. This pane here, it's dual paned, right? So the pane on the left, this is my file system on my main production machine, this Manjaro desktop, right? The laptop we just logged into is on the right pane. This is that the, the laptop over there. So uh, let's move some stuff around. So how would you use this for, you know, transferring files? Because that's really what SFTP you know, is for file transfer protocol, right? Well, for an example, I'm going to, how about my xmonad directory? Here on my main production machine, I have a folder called .xmonad. I don't have that folder on that laptop because I don't use xmonad on that laptop. So I know that file or that directory doesn't already exist, but I'm going to upload it from my production machine to the laptop. And you will see xmonad, when we now have that directory on that laptop. If I click on it, it'll have all my xmonad configs from this machine. You know, I've transferred over to that machine. So very simple. And of course, I could go vice versa. I could download, you know, something from the laptop to my 
host machine here. So I could download, uh, well, we've got this image file right here called dot face. How about I download that? So it's downloading that from the laptop to my main production machine here. I should have a file called dot face now somewhere in here. And there it is. Yep. So let me delete that file because I really don't need that on this machine. I also, while I'm here, I'm going to delete the xmonad directory that I sent the other way that I uploaded to the uh, laptop. So FileZilla, really easy, really neat little graphical file transfer protocol tool. Uh, pretty simple to use. So uh, it, it's a program I've used for many, many years, uh, even before I was using Linux full-time as a on the desktop I knew about FileZilla uh, using it to upload files you know from my local machine to web servers is usually what I used file transfer protocol for but there's no reason you can't use it for other reasons if you got a lot of different machines though SSH is a really neat tool you guys if you've never played around with SSH it's really neat just open up a terminal SSH into any machine you want to you can move files around, update the system, do whatever you need to do on that remote machine in a secure way. Uh, you can also secure SSH with uh, keys. Instead of having to type a password every time you log into a machine, you can actually set up with what are called SSH keys. And that way you no longer have to type passwords uh, because these two machines will know each other. You have a key on that and a key on this one and these machines basically recognize each other so there's a convenience factor but using SS SSH keys is more about security than convenience because passwords if you have to type in a password passwords can be cracked but using these SSH keys they're much tougher to crack so it's actually a security feature so you may want to check out using SSH keys if you use SSH uh, I'm also going to link to all the other wiki pages here the SCP and the SFTP page you guys should check out Anyway, just some, some neat stuff you know I've been using for, for years. I just thought I'd share with you guys. And this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, David, Leor, and Rob. These guys are the sponsors of the show. Without them, none of this would be possible. I also want to give a, a quick thanks to all my Patreon supporters. The show is also brought to you by the good ladies and gentlemen. You see their names on the screen here. If you enjoy this video, please do consider supporting the channel. You will find me over on Patreon. Just look for DistroTube over at Patreon. Peace, guys.